Hello, and welcome to the course of U.S. history. I am your host, Mr. Samuelson. Last time we were together, we looked at the settling of the New England colonies of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New Hampshire. We talked about Maine, but remember, Maine just doesn't matter. Now we're going to be talking about the settling of the Middle Colonies. These are New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Let's get into a little bit of non-U.S. history for a moment, though. Uh, in between New England and Virginia was this Dutch colony, the New Netherlands. Okay, so we're into Dutch history for a moment here. So we'd had New England, we'd had Virginia and the southern lands, but smack dab in between was this New Netherlands. Now, it had been allowed to exist for a while because the English were simply busy. Now, the Dutch themselves, they were fur traders following in the French example. If you remember, New France was all about that fur trade, and the Dutch largely about the fur trade as well, although they got into farming somewhat too. Um, and they had purchased a lot of their land from Native Americans. They'd arrived with uh, European goods and exchanged those. Quite famously, they got the island of Manhattan pretty cheaply. Um, so this was how the Dutch had come into the area as traders. Now, the colony was small, but they had a very valuable port in the city of New Amsterdam on the island of Manhattan. So it was an incredibly valuable uh, settlement because it controlled all trade along the Hudson River. Uh, this settlement is today known as New York City. Now, this English Civil War was a big deal in colonial history. In the mid-1600s, the English Parliament, led by the Puritans, overthrew King Charles I and executed them. So England is without a king. And throughout that whole war, they were very focused on this war between Parliament and the king. And then afterwards, they're like, oh my gosh, we've, we've lost our king. Um, and there's going to be some more fallout from that. And they're very much not focused on the colonies at the time. And this is where uh, the colonial traditions of self-government really get rolling. They had to govern themselves. England was too busy to worry about them. But Puritan rule in England was very unpopular. Um, they liked to have everybody be Puritan, kind of like what we learned about in Massachusetts. The English themselves had been Anglican. They'd had all these other traditions. They didn't necessarily want to uh, just follow these Puritan rules, uh, which included no dancing, no music, no drinking. People were like, what? How are we going to have fun? So they, uh, they start to push back against Puritan rule. And in 1660, they invite Charles II, who was the son of Charles I and had been hiding out in France uh, once he saw daddy's head start to roll. Um, he comes back and easily overthrows Parliament, restores the monarchy to England. So once again, we now have a king in England. Now, let's go back to the colonies for a moment. During that Civil War, England hadn't focused on the colonies. They had more important things to do. Now Charles II is back, and he's looking over at the New World and saying, hey, there's a lot of mismanagement over it. There's a lot of opportunity. We need to get on top of this. Starting with, we need to unite our colonies. We need to get those New England and Virginia colonies together. This new Amsterdam is in our way. So he sends four ships over there, four warships, and finds new Amsterdam pretty willing to accept English rule. They hadn't really liked uh, Peter Soyvestant, their governor, um, felt that that was being mismanaged, that he was kind of not a nice guy. And here are the English with their four large warships. Um, yeah, England, why don't you go ahead and take over? Well, the English don't like the name New Amsterdam, they rename it New York after James, the Duke of York, future King of England. Um, and that is how we get New York. Now, within this colony, there were a lot of Dutch and there were a lot of Swedes who had settled in the Delaware River area. Um, and they were allowed to stay. It wasn't like, we're in charge now, you got to go. It's we're in charge now, you can stay. Just understand that we are in charge. You have no say. And in New York, the settlers had very little 
to no political freedom. The governor, who was appointed by the king, had absolute power. He got to rule however he wanted or however the king directed him. There was no legislature that balanced out his power. Uh, New York was a royal colony. It was the property of the king. The king owned the colony. It was like his backyard. It was his personal property. It was his and only his. Now, New Jersey was originally a part of New York. This whole area in pink was a part of this New York colony initially. Uh, that was former New Amsterdam, former um, New Sweden, and then it all became New York. But the king is going to use this colony like money. And New Jersey is one of the first to go. It gets separated off of New York. So they just cut off this part of the colony, and that is now going to be New Jersey. And it's given to two men who had supported Charles during the Civil War. So those two men get this as a proprietary colony, and this is a personal property of those men. They have to follow the, the greater laws of England, but they can do what they want with their land. It belongs to them. Those two men get New Jersey. This is until 1702, when there was a lot of mismanagement in New Jersey. They weren't handling it very well. So it becomes a royal colony and uh, goes right back to the monarchs of England, which by this time was a different monarch. We're now looking at William and Mary. Now, Pennsylvania, again, part of New York. In England, there's a religious group called the Quakers. Okay? Quakers are being persecuted for this religion. They had suffered through some bad times during Puritan rule because the Puritans didn't like anybody who wasn't Puritan. They didn't like the Quakers. So the Quakers had sided with the king during the Civil War. Now, their support was mostly financial because Quakers don't believe in violence. They believe in absolute equality. All people are equal. doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter if you're Quaker or Puritan or Anglican. It doesn't matter. We're all equal, and we do not support violence of any kind. So Quakers don't fight in this war. Instead, they give a whole bunch of money to the king. And William Penn was one of these super wealthy Quakers. He's going to be able to leverage the money that he gave to the king. That is, he's going to be able to convince the king to give him a home for Quakers because of all that money. It works out this way because after the war, King Charles simply just doesn't have a lot of money. And he owes a lot of money to the Penn family. So the Penns just say, all right, well, we can work this out. Just give us a huge chunk of land instead. And so William Penn will accept Pennsylvania, this huge chunk, as payment for that loan. And now he has it as a proprietary colony, and in it, true to kind of Quakerish beliefs here, offers complete religious freedom. Anglican, Catholic, Jew, Quaker, it doesn't matter. Come and enjoy life in Pennsylvania. Delaware. Now, Delaware is a former colony of New Sweden, and it's had kind of a interesting go of it. You see, New Sweden was conquered by New Netherlands, which was then conquered by New York. So it had already been a part of all of these uh, other parts. It had been New Sweden, it had been New Netherlands, it had been New York. And now it's going to be part of Pennsylvania. It was given to William Penn as a part of that uh, deal. Because William Penn in Pennsylvania didn't actually have a seaport. It was landlocked. You can see in this map here that they don't really have access to the sea. This was um, part of New York. And then it gives, is given to uh, Pennsylvania so that they have access to the sea. But they quickly determined that culturally, economically, it was very different from the rest of Pennsylvania. Um, and they do eventually separate from the colony of Pennsylvania. And they create their own separate colony of Delaware. That, my friends, is the middle colonies. Next time we will be looking at the southern colonies. We've done a lot with Virginia. We'll kind of touch on that again, but we're mostly going to focus on Maryland, the Carolinas, and Georgia. Thank you for joining me today. Farewell.